Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to have you with me today. Um, today's sermon is called Safest Place to Hide. Let's pray. Father, I praise you and worship you, God. And I just want to want to say thank you, Lord, for being our safe place and our soft place. Thank you, Lord, for just being there for us and loving us and seeing us through all, all our challenges of our lives, oh God. Speak through me, speak through me, touch hearts, touch minds, touch spirits. Speak to us all at the same time, Lord Jesus. Speak to me, speak to every person on, on Facebook and on YouTube that will be hearing this message. Send it far and wide, oh God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, as I said, this message is called Safest Place. Um, the, sa the Safest Place. Um, I got this message from a song um, by the Backstreet Boys because um, you guys know I love music. So I was listening to I was watching their documentary from about 10 years ago uh, when they did their, um, I forgot what tour it was, but when they were on tour about 10 years ago, before the tour, they did a documentary called Show Me What You're Made Of. And um, I was watching that documentary and, um, in that documentary, it was the making of their album at the time, and it was in their in a world like this album from like 2013, and uh, they were they were making the album and they were talking about the uh, their their history and all of that, and they. They sang this beautiful rendition of Safest Place to Hide right at the end of um, the documentary. And I, I was like, oh my God, I need to hear this whole song. And when I heard this whole song, um, the Lord, I said, one day I have got to do a sermon on this and the Lord agreed um, with me and we and we kind of agreed together that today would be the day that I um, do this sermon. Um, I just want to let people know out there that no matter what your idea ideas or conceptions of God um, are or have been in the past, whether you're a Christian, whether you're an agnostic, whether you're an atheist, whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Jew, whether whatever you are, I'm I'm here to tell you um, that Jesus loves you. And when I say that, um, there, there is no uh, Christian Jesus or Muslim Jesus or any like Jewish Jesus. There's there's no Jewish God. There's no Muslim God. There's, there's no, there's no 
Um, there's there's not three gods for the three different faiths. We now the three different faiths have three different views of God, but it's um but but what I want to say to you today is he loves you so much and he's not out to get you and he doesn't he doesn't want you to run from him. He he doesn't no he doesn't want you to hide from him. He wants you to hide in him. He wants you to know that despite of what religion has told you, despite of what your church or your mosque or or your temple has told you, he's not out to get you. You don't have to do something to work your way into heaven. You don't have to have to uh, pray a certain time of day or read the Bible a certain number of ways or read any religious text a certain number of ways. He just wants me to tell you that he loves you so much just because you are his child. He loves you so much. He loves you so much and he wants you. I know some people out there don't feel wanted by anyone, but I'm telling you that Jesus wants you and he loves you. And you're like, if he loves me, why does, why do these things happen? Can he stop them? The answer is, I don't know why these things, why your life was the way it was or why people treated you the way they did. Um, And I'm so sorry that they did, but I'm just telling you because I know that he wants you and loves you so much and he's not out to get you. He's not out to, um, like, beat you over the head. And this is not some religious thing. This is something that I know because I've experienced that. And when I've experienced just um, just when people leave or when when life sucks for me, when things have been going on in my family, when when drama's been going on, I've always just known that I could run to Jesus, and he, I, and he could. He was the safest place that I could hide. And I I hid in him, not from him. A lot of people are, like, a lot of people have a misconception that if God found out who they really are, he wouldn't love them anymore. Or if God found out what they really think he wouldn't love them anymore. But but I've got something to tell you. God already knows who you really are. And you can't hide from God. Stop trying to hide who you really are, thinking that, oh, people, what if people find out, or... Or what if people know? What if people know? Who cares? Your freedom is so much more important than than the opinions of people. And he wants me to tell you that he is waiting for you today to realize that he wants to be the safest place that you hide, 
and he doesn't want you to hide from him, run from him. He wants you to hide in him. Like, it's almost like, um, like, you know, a child um, sitting in their, their parents' lap and just uh, getting hugs and uh, kisses and stuff. And some of you may not know what that feels like. Some of you may have have had awful parents. Um, and you may not have had love or whatever. And you're like, Rachel, I don't know what that feels like. How can I love a God when I, when I haven't known what that feels like? Beloved, Jesus today wants to teach you what that feels like. You, you say, well, when you say father, Rachel, that scares me because I didn't have a father. Or I didn't have a safe place to hide. I don't know what that means. And I can't stress people because um, people hurt me. Yes, I understand sometimes uh, people can be total jerks and hurt and do all kinds of mess to people. But I'm telling you that people are not God. Uh, what the world does not understand is there's a difference between religion, the church, and the relationship. Let's, let's talk about religion. Religion for me is a, like um, standard, like, Sta uh, standards uh, to live your life. So whether whether you follow uh, the Muslim faith, it, it's a set of um, principles uh, to live your life. So kind of do's and don'ts and all of that. Um, so that's a, a religious thing. The, the church um, is where Christians gather um, to worship. Um, it's, it's, but, but a relationship with God is a total different thing. See, you can have a relationship with God and don't go to church. You can have a relationship with God and not be what they say religious, like, or just um, not follow um, the practices totally. All God wants from you right now is a relationship with you. The other stuff will come. Uh, he doesn't want a religion. A, a do, this is what you do. This is what you don't do. This is how you act. This is what you don't, this is how you don't act. That's what religion does. Religion kind of, uh, teaches you rules, regulations, uh, some principles about how to act. And the church is the place that, that Christians gather to worship. But relationship is what he wants. I'm not saying that religion is bad. I'm not saying that the church is bad. It's those two things have their place. But first and foremost, God wants a relationship with you. And I don't think the world understands the difference 
between a religion and a relationship. Because people can have religion, but no relationship. Because several people um, do the religious thing, like they read their Bible, they go to church. But outside of that, they have no relationship with God. Like, like they they read the, their Bible, they sing the songs, they do whatever, but it's not a real relationship. Like, God doesn't walk with them through their day-to-day. They might uh, read their Bible or follow a Bible study plan, but there's no genuine relationship. And that's what the Lord wants from you today. And he wants you to know that he is a safe place. He is a safe place where you can hide in. You don't have to hide from. Hiding from the Lord doesn't work because he he knows where you are. He knows who you are. He knows what you've done. He knows what you're trying to do. And you know what, beloved? He loves you anyway. Whatever you done, whatever you done, whatever sexual orientation you are, whoever you've slept with, whoever you've hurt, whoever you've um, disregarded, he knows where you are, and he knows who you are, and he knows all the secrets of your heart, and he loves you anyway. He loves you anyway. Um, And the problem is, like, because, you know, uh, Christians are just people. And we have our own own flaws and our own baggage. So sometimes when you bump into a Christian and they're trying to be righteous or whatever, and and they say something rude or mean or tell you something, that's because, honey, they're hurting too. But they're using their religion to cover their hurt instead of using their relationship to heal their hurt. See, a relationship with God heals hurt. It doesn't cover it. Religion tries to cover. Let's cover and make everything all right. But relationship heals. Religion covers, but relationship heals. Relationship goes down to the very marrow of a person and Relationship goes down to the very marrow of a person and heals that person, soothes that person. It's like a healing balm that he puts on and just restores you. And I know it's hard to trust because people people have been total... Uh, crap to you, but God is not people. God is love, and yes, people are supposed to exemplify God, but sometimes we don't because we have our own issues, and sometimes Christians are too proud to admit that they don't have, to admit that they have issues, so they cover it with relationship instead of, no, they cover it with religion instead of healing it with relationship. Because a genuine relationship with God heals. It restores, it delivers. I was watching this celebrity um, who just got divorced. uh, And she said, when... When I was on this show, 
I felt like I had to be happy all the time and I was struggling. And I said, and I said to myself, if she only had the courage to come out and say, I'm hurting, I'm, I'm hurting, I'm in pain, people would flock to that because, because people are just uh, waiting for someone to say, I'm not. I'm not okay. And it's okay not to be okay. I'll say that one time. One more time. It's okay not to be okay. And Jesus wants to be the place where you hide in. Where where he wants to wrap your arm his arms around you and love you like crazy love you like nobody else has loved you in your life. And being loved by the Lord is just indescribable. I can't I can't even describe it in the sermon. And he told me wants me to tell you that he wants to be your safe place and soft place. When things get hard, he doesn't want you to run and hide from him. He wants you to run and hide in him, run to him. He wants to keep you safe. He wants to love you and know a relationship with God is not easy. And yes, there will be things that he'll ask you to change, but he'll do that in time and he'll do that so lovingly that sometimes you don't realize you're changing and he'll change you, but he'll do it at your pace and he'll do it in his way for you because he, he has, he has a specific way that he'll do it for you. So he's not out to get you. He's not with in the, like sitting with a hammer in heaven. Oh, to get your sin. Oh, that's a sin. Oh, let's get you. Let's send you to hell. No. He's he's out to love you, like, so much. He's out to love you so much. And I believe that he wants to just so love on you right now. He wants to so teach you what love is and you're probably saying like like foreigner you're probably saying in my life there's been heartache and pain I don't know if I can face it again can't stop now I've traveled so far to change this lonely life. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me and it's changing. I want to be with love is. I know you can show me. That's what you're probably say- saying in your heart. And He's saying, yes, I want to show you what love truly is. And he's saying, I want to teach you what love truly is. He's like, there's no there's no need to be scared. He's like, I know you don't trust me right now. And it's okay that you don't trust me right now. It's okay that you don't have faith right now, we'll get there. It's a process. We'll work on you. Like, I think we as Christians have done a disservice to people uh, saying that they have to have faith right now and they have to do things right now, not really understanding that it's a process 
having faith in God, having trust in God is a process. Um, depending on your life and lifestyle and what you've been through and how you've been broken, it's a process. And he understands that. He understands that it's a process. He understands that you don't trust him or you don't trust any, anybody right now. And you know what? That's okay. You'll get there. You just have to take uh, the first step and say, and say whatever you want to say to God. You know, a lot of, uh, we often we often pray with people to accept the Lord. I I don't I don't really do that with people because I believe that God wants to hear them for themselves wherever wherever they are. It doesn't have to make sense to anyone else. If you say God. I don't understand you. I don't even know if I believe in you, but something that Rachel said today really stirred me. So just show me who you are. And he'll do that in the process of time. And if you if you say, God, I'm so upset. I'm so mad. I don't trust people. And I don't think I could trust you. He'll say, that's fine. We'll start from there. You know, you, we, tend to th- we tend to think that people have to accept the Lord right now. Like, right now, you have to have all the faith in whatever. No. He understands that it's a process. And wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever sexual orientation you are, whatever skin color you are, he loves you and he wants you. And there is nothing, nothing that will will turn him away from you. No no past mistake, nothing. Um, You know, we've just made it like, like so difficult. And I often say when I when when I hear people say, um, uh, y- y- "Let's pray after me to accept the Lord," I'm like, "What if they're not there? What if they're not? You know, like I I often say, you've been pastoring for years, but what if they're not there? I just say." Take your time, take it one step at a time, wherever you are, tell him about it. And it, and it will feel strange to uh, pray and maybe talk to the ceiling. It will, it will feel strange, but after a while, you'll get into it and he'll be showing you more of who he is and you'll kind of develop this beautiful relationship. And he'll direct you on which church to go to. And he'll bring people in your life uh, when you need. Uh, And it's just going to be a wonderful relationship. And it will have its challenges. It definitely will. You You might lose a lot, but you'll gain so much more. And you'll you'll gain more understanding about yourself because he made you and he understands you and he wants you to know that he's the safest place. And some of you, under the sound of my voice, don't feel safe right now. Um, but he wants you to know that if you're lost, um, he knows where you are. And you don't have to feel like, like 
confused, you're lost, because he knows where you are. And he wants me to tell you that he wants to be your safe place. Uh, some of you are looking for a man or a woman or both to be your safe place and soft place to fall. But first, before you look for another person to be that safe and soft place, look for Jesus to be that safe and soft place to fall. Fall into his arms before you fall into anyone's bed or anyone, any human's arms. Because humans will always fail. No matter how good their intentions are, some people have the various intentions to, to take advantage of people, and some people most people um, do it unknowingly, like hurt and, uh, you know, and damage people unknowingly. But God will never hurt you. He'll never damage you. Like, things, things will get rocky, and sometimes, it, sometimes it will seem like he's not listening, but he always is. And it'll seem like he, he doesn't answer prayer, but he always does. And a lot of people um, say, why doesn't God answer prayer? He, my, my opinion is he always answers prayer. But sometimes he doesn't give us the answer that we want. Sometimes when we don't see the answer that we want, the answer is no. Or it could be, like Holly Furtick said last week in her sermon, the, it, the answer could be not for you to know. And, but despite that, he just wants you to run to him right now. He says, you've been running to all these things. You've been running to Amazon. You've been running to Netflix. You've been running to gossip. You've been running to celebrity gossip. He's saying, he, God's saying he wants you to run to him right now. He says he, wa he wants you to, he wants to genuinely wrap you up in his arms and make you feel wanted. Hunt, Hunter Hayes had a, Hunter Hayes, the country singer, had a song years ago um, that talks about, it said, I want to wrap you up, want to kiss your lips, I I wanna make you feel warm. I wanna hope. Wanna hope. Mm. I forget. Wanna hold your hand forever. I never let you forget. I wanna make you feel warm. I screwed that up, I'm sorry. Um, but I will put it on on my page later so that you guys can listen to the real song. Um, but he wants to make you feel wanted. You felt like nobody's really wanted you or appreciated you for years. And God today said, I have wanted you. I have appreciated you. I have seen you. He wants to say right now that he has seen you. He's seen where you are. And he wants you to feel wanted, loved, cherished, belong to. And he says, beloved, you belong to me. Come into my arms. And let me love you. Let me love you. 
some of you have been uh, been holding this distance with God, like you've been worshiping, you've been uh, reading your Bible, you've been doing all the religious things, all the religious rules and everything. But he's saying, I don't want you to be religious. I want you to have a relationship with me. I want to, you to bring me close and know that I'm not going to hurt you. He's like, I know why you're, why you're holding me at a distance because you're afraid that I'll hurt you just like some of those people that claim to be my people did. But I won't. I want to love you. Let me close to you. Tear down the wall today and let God close and run to him. Let him wrap you in his arms. Let him, let him hold you. Let him love you. You're his child. And he so wants to do that. He doesn't, he doesn't want to punish you. He wants to pursue you. He wants you to run to him. He wants to show you who he is. He wants, he wants to reveal to you his secrets and his precious promises. N not only in the Bible, he has promises in the Bible, but what I'm learning in my relationship is with God is he has promises that are just for me that he'll that he'll speak to me for my own life in words that I can understand and he wants to be that personal to you he's not a distant God distant God who doesn't care about you He's, he's not a distant God who only, who only wants you for a number for his church. You're not just a number. To God, you are a person. To the Lord, you are a unique, special, beautiful person. Despite what you've done, despite what the church has said, despite what whatever happened. See, the church as a body is filled with people. And sometimes people are hurt. And sometimes people that claim to be Christians, they're mean and they're, they're, they're wrong because they're hurt. And the Lord wants to love, the Lord wants to show you his love today and his grace today. And it's just so wonderful what he wants you to do. He, he wants you to run to him. He wants to know that your heart is safe with him. Your heart has been bashed on by every man or every woman and, and, and friends and everything. But even though your heart is broken, he can take the broken pieces of your heart and mend them together. He can take the broken and make something beautiful. He can take the, the broken and make something beautiful. And he wants you to give him the broken pieces of your heart today. He wants to give you he wants to you to give him the broken pieces of your heart today so he can mend it. He wants you to get to give him your heart today and he knows that it's tattered. He knows that it's broken. And even if you can't give him your heart right now, even if you're not at a place of distrust, just tell him whatever you're feeling. He'll start with wherever you are and bring you up to where he wants you to be. What have you got to lose? Nothing. And it is not, 
It is not an easy relationship. It is not an easy road. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. Thank you, Lord. I just praise you for for doing what you've been doing to your people. I praise you for just bringing your people to you through this message, being the safest place that we can hide in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the souls that are hearing this message and will come to you in their own time, in their own way, at their own pace. By the leading of your spirit, I believe your spirit is drawing your people. And thank you, Lord. And all you have to do is just tell him where you are. And he'll start from there. He'll start from there and get you to the level in which he wants you to be. A lot of people, as I say before, say a sinner's prayer. I don't do that because I think more than a cute prayer or a few little words, God wants to hear your heart. So pour out your heart, pour out your hurt, pour out your spirit, what's in your, what's in your soul, your mind, will, and your emotions to him. And he will take those broken pieces and make them something beautiful. I'm going to, I know I was, I said this message is called the safest place, but I think I'm going to call it from broken to beautiful. Because I think that's what the, I can sense that's what the Lord wants me to call it. So I'm changing the title of this message. It's going to be called from broken to beautiful. Take care, guys. See you later. Bye. Can you see me? Here I Stand here where I've always been. When you feel like you want Climb inside my heart and still find I'm your safest place to hide. Can you see me? Here I am, standing there where I've always been. When you feel like you mean. Just climb inside my heart and still find I'm your safest place to hide. Bye, guys. See you later. Love you. You are loved by God. You are, you are loved. You are la 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 You are la 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 You are la 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 You are la 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 You are la 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 la